Hello everyone, my name is Joni and this is Harold. Hello everyone. Joni, what was so important that you called me here to the command center? I was right in the middle of practicing some new robot dance moves. Harold, no more robot, you big dork. You promised. We are here because the amount of malicious email is out of control and more and more people are falling victims to elaborate phishing scams and spam. That sounds horrible, Joni. But what can we do? Well, Harold, October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month and I thought we could share some examples of malicious emails to highlight the kinds of tactics people should look out for. Fantastic. I think that is a brilliant idea. Okay then. I brought along some examples taken from my spam filter. I thought you and I could take turns reading a few. Fantastic. If people hear us reading them they will see just how ridiculous they sound and hopefully not fall victim to the more similar ones. You're exactly right Harold. If people would only imagine one of us as they read a suspicious email it might help them realize it is not legitimate and that they should just delete it. Really, Joni? They should just delete suspicious emails? Absolutely. Just delete them without a second thought. I suppose you are right. If it was legitimate, the sender will try again or just give them a phone call. That's right. And there is no need to call the help desk or the CIO. Just delete it and maybe set up a filter to handle the next one automatically. Sounds like good advice. What about those examples you mentioned? Here's the first one from Favorimpka with a subject title of Hello my love. Why don't you read this one? Okay, here goes. From for the baby underscore two two at ATT. Netty dear. How are you doing today? I hope everything is fine. If so, thanks be to God Almighty who made it so. My name is Favor and I am a girl. Saw your email address in a forwarded page so I decided to extend my greetings to you. Right now I can't really say what prompted my drive to write you, but I do have the mind that you could be a nice person. I have an interest to meet people from outside my continent to be friends. It is my belief that there are nice people out there who can appreciate the value of friendship. Personal I might not be very beautiful physically like most ladies in your country, but I think I have a beautiful mind and the beauty to hold my own. Which is more valuable to me, and to be your friend even more than that, but as time goes on we will know better. I will be very glad if you can contact me through my alternative email address, so that I can send you my pictures and tell you more about myself. Here is my address, for vargod underscore one at yahoo.com. Hoping to talk to you soon. Have a nice day and remain blessed. Regards, favor. I see what you mean, Joni. Let me read another example. This one is from Mrs. Johnson Williams using the email address bbc at server.fulltomagic.com in a subject line of Dear Lucky Winners. Joni. If that is the BBC prize announcements then I may have got that same one today. Harold quit being a dork and let me just read the email so the people will know what to look for. You don't have to call me a dork. But you are a dork. Here is that example http colon slash slash www.bbc.co.uk slash lottery slash September 9th draw no 155,315, 26, 30, 35, 40, 41 bonus 34 dear lucky winners, consolation prize winner notice. Your email has won you £750,000, 750,000 Great Britain pounds in this year's copyright 2011 BBC email award promo. This is being conducted in collaborations with the United Nations organizations, you know, with the aim to reduce poverty around the globe. The draw number 1526 brought out your email address from a database of internet email users and qualified your bona fide winner of the stated winning amount. Please use this money to bless other people around you by being generous. You have to always keep in touch with us on phone or emails, and always reply to every email which we might send to you. This will enable us to process and make your transfer successfully, provide the below stated information for processing of your claims. 
Please send your details as required below. 1. Name in full. 2. Home address. 3. Age. 4. Sex. 5. Occupation. 6. Direct phone number. 7. State. 8. City. 9. Present country. Please contact our claims officer. Mrs. Stella Anderson. Claim department director. Telephone. Plus 4470 1004 9278. Email. Stella underscore Anderson 011 at hotmail.com. Regards Mrs. Johnson Williams. Group coordinator. Joan, you don't think people actually fall for those, do you? You know that they would actually respond to an email from someone they don't know or recognize and give them all kinds of personal information. Come on, Harold. That is why they call it phishing. Here is similar example for you to read from EcoBank with a subject of important information slash urgent. Right. Here goes then. Dear Sir slash Madam, this is to notify you that the Board and Foreign Exchange Control Committee of EcoBank received notification letter from the government regarding your part payment inheritance fund payment, US, 900,000, on going through files, we discovered that you have spent much money on the transaction due to the payment method. The government sent the notification letter to inform us that after 72 hours the management will convert your inheritance fund into government bonded account as unclaimed fund. This office advises you to notify us, the cause of the delay. Reconfirm the below information to us, your full name, your residential address, your private telephone number, your urgent response is needed. Telex Department Unit Eco Bank Gugadu Guberkina Faso. It is just amazing how creative some of the emails are and we haven't even had to use one of the mail enhancement or mail enlargement or Viagra emails to demonstrate that. Say Joni. Do you think they have any of that mail enhancement stuff for robots? Harold, what did I say about being a dork? So sorry. It seems like we should offer some tips for safe email practices to help people recognize phishing scams or other types of malicious emails. That's a great idea, Harold. But before we do that I wanted to also mention phishing attacks may also appear to come from other types of organizations, such as charities. Attackers often take advantage of current events and certain times of the year, such as natural disasters like Hurricane Katrina or the Indonesian tsunami. Epidemics and health scares like the H1N1 or economic concerns and IRS scams are also used. But so are major political elections and holidays. Joni, I am so glad you remembered that last bit. Now about those tips to avoid being a victim of phishing attack. 1. Never respond to emails that request personal or financial information. Banks or e-commerce companies like Amazon and eBay generally personalize emails, while fishers do not. Fishers often include false but sensational messages. Urgent, your account details may have been stolen in order to get an immediate reaction. 2. Be suspicious of unsolicited email messages from individuals or companies you don't recognize particularly emails that are not from a com or net account that end in unusual country abbreviations. 3. If you are unsure whether an email request is legitimate, try to verify it by contacting the company directly. Do not use contact information provided on a website connected to the request. Instead, check previous statements for contact information. 4. Keep your computer secure by installing and maintaining antivirus software firewalls, and email filters to reduce some of this traffic. 5. Finally, when in doubt just delete it. That was some great advice. So Joni, what do you say to working on those robot dance moves? OK Harold, after I remind people to plan for Cyber Security Awareness Month in October and to thank our sponsor, the Higher Ed CIO for having us on today, hear it Harold, you big dork. Brilliant. Time to fly my dork flag high.